Thank you for tuning in. We are Tristan and Michael, and you are listening to Fuse Transparent Conversations for Marriage, Family, and Relationships. We invite you to join us as we discuss perspectives that are thought about but not talked about. So tell your friends and family to check us out and connect with us on social media. Join the conversation by emailing us at info at fusedmarriages.com. All right. So, Michael, what is our topic for today? Well, 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 well. Well, well, well. We probably should put a disclaimer out a little bit. Uh Uh-oh. Because it's really, you know, it's our perspective, right? Right. But I think it's still very enlightening to what we have to say. Okay. But it may not apply to every single relationship, but I think it could apply to a lot. Okay. Okay. And the topic is, Mm -hmm. is your boo for you? Is your boo for you? For you. Yes, all ma'am. right, all right. Now, what do you what do you mean by that? Well, well, I guess what I mean is that you know what is the person that you're with mm-hmm. are that are y'all matched up correctly? Ooh. You know, it's sometimes you know what we kind of get with somebody for various reasons, right? But I think there's some key things that kind of show you know what if a person is matched up with another person in the right fashion. Okay, well, let's talk about it's it. What do you think? What do you think? It's controversial. It's controversial. You know what I mean? So, like, in our intro video, right? You mm-hmm. know, we can go check it out on YouTube if you haven't seen it. Mm-hmm. I interviewed her. You say, you know what? You really like me. I and, do. Right. And that's why you married me, right? Yeah. So, I think that is a very, very important aspect of a relationship. Do you like who you with? Yeah, that's real talk. Real talk. Because I think a lot of people will say, well, I love him or I love her. And it's like, but yeah, do you, do you like them? Do you like spending time with them? Do you like their who they are as a person, their character, um, what they are interested in, all of that right, stuff? Right, do you right. like them? So what, what do you think that term, do I like my partner or my spouse or girlfriend or whatever? Boyfriend? Right, right, right. So let's explain what we're talking about. I say like, you know okay. what I mean? Because mm-hmm. that can mean a lot of different things, a lot of different people. And I guess when we say like, you know what? Do I like spending time with them? You know what I mean? Do we have some common interests where we can kind of, you know what? We both like to watch soap operas. Oh, okay. You know, I mean, just I mean, hey, I mean, everybody different. Do you? Do if, you? If they both like it, they both like it. Right. So, you know what I mean? Do they have some common interest to show that, you know what? They can spend some time together and enjoy it. Okay. Fair. Fair. What do you think about that? Yeah. I think this is what I think is really interesting. I think sometimes people get together on false pretenses. Mm-hmm. So like, for example, and this is a real generic, probably been done example, but like she might start to like football because he likes football, yep. even that though she happens. really doesn't like football, but it's just to be like, Oh, we like the same stuff or whatever. Right. Right. And so I think that that creates not only a falsehood, but it's setting you up for like a dysfunctional relationship because he's going to actually think that you really like football and you really know what you're talking about when you just looked up what a touchdown is like 30 well, minutes before. Yeah. So I think that you do yourself a disservice by pretending, but that's not to say that you do not show interest in what they're interested in. So I think the difference is, Hey, I don't really know a lot about football, but mm-hmm. I, you can teach me some things versus, right. Oh man, I watch sports all the time. Right. I think that that's when you start to kind of get into some sketchy territory. Right. Right. So I I agree with you. I think it's important to have similar interests, things that you can spend time together doing and exploring and enjoying. Um, You know, like if you both like to travel or you like going to the museum or you both like music, so you can go to concerts together. I think that that's definitely an important aspect of being in a relationship and discerning if your boo is for you. Right. Right. So basically, if I'm hearing you correctly, they don't have to like everything. Right. The same. No, no. But they got to have some common things that, you know, what they enjoy doing together, hanging out. Yeah. Just yeah. spending time together. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you have to also sh- show interest, mm-hmm. like to a degree, what your partner likes. Right. Like you can't just hate if they love spending time with children and you can't stand children. That's going to be Ouch. a problem. That would That's be a big problem. A big problem. Okay. Yeah. So I think that really at least finding some commonality between the two of you is going to be pretty important. So okay. yeah, okay. I agree with okay. you. Okay. You I said you brought the kids into it. What if they don't like your kids? Oh, can't you work. got kids and they don't like them. Can't work. Ain't possible? Ain't possible. If Ain't. they don't like yeah. kids, Mainly, if they don't like your your kids, kids, it's going to be a problem. I mean, it's not even, it's a no-go. Don't even keep, don't walk the, cut the end. That's it. Show over. 
That's a wrap. That's a wrap. I, I agree. I yeah, because you can't, you can't even, you can't even go in because the kids are a part of it. They are not the only part. They're not even really the sole part. You don't get together because somebody has kids. Even I, I mean, this get controversial, but I don't even think you get together because you have a kid together. Like, mm-hmm. oh, we have a kid now, we must get married. Like, ah, uh, I don't know about that. Mm-mm. But I do say that if one or both people have kids, you have to care about the other person's kids and you have to care enough about the other person to care about their kids. So what I mean is you have to care about, I have to care about my partner Mm -hmm. and I have to care about my partner's kids because if I only care about my partner and their kids are just thrown in when my partner is not there, I don't care about the kids at all. Mm. I don't spend time with them. I don't ask them how their day is going. I'm just really doing it because I care about the dude or Mm. I care about the chick. So you have to care about him or her. And then you also have to care about the kids because when you actually care about the kids, even if it's okay, I don't agree with everything. I don't like how they're being, you know, raised in the other person's home. If it's a blended Mm -hmm. family or split household or whatever, but you have to find something, Hey, they like skateboarding. Okay. Well, I could get into skateboarding or they like right, to draw. Right, you have right. to find something that connects you with the kid that even if it's just one step at a time, okay, wow, we found out we like this together. Well, maybe I can teach her how to make scrambled eggs or maybe I can teach him how to change a tire or whatever it is. So you don't have to be like all in right away, but you have to say, okay, I care enough about this kid to invest the time and I care enough about this person to take the whole package. Man, you went to the deep end of the pool. Sorry. You know, first five minutes, you went all the way. I got things to say on this topic. And if you guys have things to say, please hit us up on our social media. You can always join the conversation info at fusedmarriages.com or any of our platforms at fused marriages. So, um, Michael, let's get back into what you think about what I was just saying as we talk about like love relationships. What do you think about? being able to kind of hang out with your, your partner. We talked about like finding common interests, but right. what about that quality quantity time? Right. I mean, I think, you know I mean? She may not like, and I'm talking to say from a male perspective, you know what? We kind of, we into sports and this, that, and the other. Mm-hmm. She may not like sports. You can't, I don't think that'd be a disqualifier. Right. But like, as a dude, that that's all you like, you know what I mean? That's a problem right there. That should be like a sign right there for a female. You got to have some yeah. other interests. Broaden your horizon. <laughs> yeah. A outside bit. of that. Yeah. You mentioned travel. Yeah. Some people like going to shows or plays or listening yeah. to music. Maybe it's one of those, like, you know what I mean? So hanging out, maybe we can go to a show, go to let's go, go to a concert, Lauren yeah. Hill, you know what I mean? Hey, you know, I love Jill Scott. Hill. Come on now. You we see what my vibe concerts. is that? Anthony yeah. Hamilton. Come on, come on. I'm just saying, I'm like, you know, we I'm can go to one of those baby to face. Concert. We actually went to baby face, though. Did. Hey, he put good. on a show. He always does. Hey, he like 60 something. I mean, he ran around the whole stadium. I'm saying. Like two times. Like for real. Yeah, and the stadium was big. It wasn't no small one. He's a beast. Yeah. So anyway, so obviously we like music. That's what we right. share in common. But I think it's important to have those conversations up front in the beginning. Right. What right. do you have in common? What do you like to do? And spend time doing what the other person likes to do, even if it's not something that you initially enjoy, to see if you can enjoy it. What I mean is if your if you're date or the person that you're looking at to see if they're, you know, they're the one, mm-hmm. and they like going to art galleries. And when you go to art galleries – you feel like pulling out your hair. You are just want to be texting on your phone. You can't stand it. Right. That's not going to be something that is sustainable nope. for the relationship. So I think you need to evaluate, okay, is this something that I can get into? Can I find a common interest? Maybe there's a certain kind of art that you like to go see. There you go. But I think that if you really want this person to be it, you really need to evaluate what things do you have in common? What things do you enjoy doing together? How do you like to hang out? Right. Are they, it doesn't, and I'm not saying one person's a homebody, one person likes to go out. Like that doesn't necessarily mean, oh, we're not, we're not for each other. But I think it's okay compromising some on that but what do they like to do when they go out what do they like to do when they're at the house do Mm. they like to netflix and chill do they like to you know cook or do they like to go to the park do they like to do outdoor activities really having some honest dialogue because what you don't want to do is get together and then find out it was all a facade and we were faking each other out and we love each other but we really don't like each other And then I I would really question if you really love each other because you fell in love with the pretend version of who the person is. That happens, though. Yeah, I think it does. I think it happens a lot. That does happen. Yeah. Mm. I think not on purpose, but it happens. Mm. What do you mean? mean? We try to put our best foot forward, right? So we can make, like you said, kind of say you do some things, you like some things, you really don't. 
Mm-hmm. And then, you know, time over, you know, about the six months down the road, you're like, I thought you were this. I thought you liked watching sports with me. Mm-hmm. I was just doing that to get with you. Oof. You know what I mean? I thought you liked going out to eat. No, nah, you know what? This is part of the game. I got to spend money to get, you know, that's what, how it worked. Mm-mm. Yikes. Yeah, I think that that could be problematic for the the entirety of the relationship because then you start to question everything. Like, yep. dang, you you were watching yep. sports with me. You really don't like sports? No, not really. Or, man, you were, you know, you always said you like going to the shows with me. You really don't like going to the theater? Nah, it ain't really my thing. And right. then it's like, well, what else is not your thing? That would yeah. be, be my question. What else yep. do you not like to do? So I'm not sure. Okay, so here here's a question. Mm-hmm. Is my spouse or, or partner stable? Mm-hmm. So that's number two, right? That's number two. So like first, do they like them? And number two, are they stable? Mm-hmm. So for me, when I when we talk about stable, we talking about everybody got them. Let me let me phrase this. Hold on. Uh oh. Everybody got some little things, little quirks about them. They kind of different. You know, I'm messy sometimes. You know. Mm-hmm. I might not brush my teeth every day, mm-hmm. you know, what just little stuff. We kind of like, it's not little, but that? okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, it's relative. <laughs> it's relative. Okay. okay. Right. Mm-hmm. But overall is my partner state, uh, is their mind, body and soul. Do they have like a good center of balance? Balance. Okay. That's that. That's, that's, that's the question you got to ask mm-hmm. about the person you with. Right. Mm-hmm. Are they stable? So you're talking about emotional, yes. physical, yes. know, spiritual. Yes. But what one of the things that I want to point out, too, when we're talking about st- stability, we're not necessarily talking about something medical. So if there's True. like an imbalance um, um, like or um, like a bipolar or something going on chemically in the body, that's not what we're talking about. Because right, right. that's something that you should also know as soon as possible. That's true. Just so that that's you true. can be on the same page with that. But what we are talking about when we're talking about stability is we're talking about who they are, how settled they are in their own being, um, how settled they are in their own mind space, direction. And it doesn't mean they have to have like this 10 year plan, but right, being right. kind of focused on progressive movement, because what can happen if somebody's not stable, if you're stable and they aren't, um, it can be challenging for you both to move forward together. Right. And I think when you say challenge, I like the word you use on that, but it's like, you also, they're like, they're unpredictable. Hmm. So you don't know what you're getting from some, from one day to the next. Yeah. So like stability is important. Like I gave you said, we take away the medical aspect of it. Some people are just like they're all over the place Mm -hmm. and it's hard to really gauge and kind of figure out where they're at and what they're doing, why they're doing it. And it's just like they haven't come to the place where, you know what? Yeah, I got some stuff I'm working on, but I got at least some direction. I'm trying to I got some things I'm trying to do. I'm trying to point myself, my career, my life, whatever I've got going on in a certain in a certain pathway. Mm -hmm. So to me, stability is saying, okay. Is my partner stable now? If you're already with somebody, and let's say they unstable, mm-hmm. but you got to that's a conversation you got to have. Say, hey, you know what? How can we get? How can I help you? We get what to does, that balance. Okay, here's the question: What does stable look like? What does mm-hmm. that look like? If I'm if I'm looking at somebody that I'm potentially considering to be the one, how do I determine are they stable? Yeah, I mean, I think it, it can look different for for each person, right? So stability depends, you know, where you're at in your life, whatever. But you know, what I mean. You have, uh, to me, I see, you know, you have a financial plan. Mm -hmm. Are you financially stable? Maybe not, but Mm -hmm. you have a financial plan, right? To get stable. Okay. Right. You have a career path or whatever you're trying to do for your, for your career and for your job or whatever. Maybe you have some aspirations, whatever you're trying to do. Okay. You have a plan. Maybe you don't have it like, you know, figured out and all kind of like, you know, mapped out how it's going to work out completely, but you know, okay, you know what? Here's a plan I'm trying to achieve. Now it's going to change from maybe from month to month, even year to year, whatever, Mm-hmm. But I got some direction on how I'm trying to head that way. Okay. So are you saying that if um, if a woman meets a man or a man meets a woman and she doesn't have this plan together, then they're not stable? Or is it possible to be stable in one area and not be stable in other areas and still be considered, you know, wifey or husband right. Right. material? I think that's good. I think that's, I mean, that's a good question and good point. I think nobody's stable in every single area of their life okay right so i think to have a person you're gonna find a person that's gonna be up oh, they're stable in every single area it's probably like you're looking you're not looking for you look for a robot mm-hmm. that's that person's not out there okay but it's almost a general sense of say you know what they not like you know what loving their mama one minute and cussing out their mama the next right you know what i mean and they not medically nothing wrong with them medically mm-hmm. you know what i mean that's like an unstable person i mean mm-hmm. we kind of can laugh and joke about that but like you know that happens people kind of like yeah. you know what they're kind of showing one side but you seeing something else too yeah 
it's, to me, that's just a sign of saying, okay, mm, do I want to jump into that? Yeah. If I already jumped into that, how can I help that person? Like, okay, hold on. What's yeah. going on? Talk to me through I this. I definitely think that that's a, um, a big sign, at least from a woman's perspective. If the one that you are, you know, in a relationship with, if he's fickle, like if he, right. hey, I want to see you and then doesn't come and see you or um, something popped up. And it's like that consistently, mm -hmm. then I would wonder how consistent he's going to be in the context of the relationship. Or if he's, um, you know, kind of hanging out and he's loving on you. And then the next minute he like, nah, I'm good. I just want to kick it over right. here. I want to be by myself or no, nah, right, I don't, right. I want my space. Then those are those kinds of things. To me, there would be those red flags. Like, mm, mm -hmm. I'm not so sure because he's already showing some dissenting characteristics that are going to be problematic when you get together because you're not going to know mm -hmm. those mood swings, like especially if you don't know what's causing them. Cause he, those kinds of things are like, he could go to work, have a bad day, come home, be cool or come home, be hot, cold. You're not really mm -hmm. sure at any time. And then you bring kids into the picture and that's that same kind of question mark um, in your head. And, and at least from a woman's perspective, that's not something that you want to daily be encountering right. kind of that, um, that t teetering that line. So I think that, yeah. I think that what you just yeah. pointed out is pretty important. Yeah. And you just, you mentioned about consistency. I love that word is when you, when you say that and kind of like tying it back to stability is like a important, an important part of stability is, is a person telling the truth. Oh, are they telling the truth about who they are, what their actions are, what they're trying to do, what they're not trying to do? Yeah. So when you say consistency, I heard, you know what? Is he lying? Is she lying? Is she trying to cover up? You know what I mean? Are he trying to cover up? So let's say, you know what? I'll say, you know what? I'm a very honoring, honoring and, and chivalrous man. Mm -hmm. And that's what I present myself as. Mm -hmm. But then like all of a sudden you see me like at the restaurant and I'm like dogging out the waitress or being mm -hmm. upset about that. Like yeah. I'm treating you one way. But somebody I don't want you another way, like, okay, hold on now. That character isn't lining yeah, up. Yeah, it's not mm -hmm. lining up. It's, to me, that's to me, that's a stability question. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe that's kind of a loose term of losing, using it that way. I think that's good. I think that's really good. Stability right there. I think that's one of those things that, you know, you don't pay attention to. I actually wrote about this um, in one of the blogs on the website. So check out the website, mm -hmm. um, fusemarriages.com. But looking for those kinds of question mark behaviors yep. um and i think consistency is a big 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 thing because if you you can find somebody that's like hey i'm working hard at this small task and i'm really moving towards something bigger but if they are inconsistent with the small tasks they might never get to that big thing and then if they do get to the big thing then they might not be dependable to handle it um, right, and right, that is not right. something that you want to partner up with is not knowing if, if your partner is going to consistently be for you is going to consistently be supportive is going to be consistently pushing towards the dream or, um, how you guys have conversations about your children or about your goals, dreams, saving money, finances, all of that. You Real can, talk. you can see some of that in those small behaviors before you get married, even down to how they treat the waitress at the restaurant, yep. either spouse, male or female, look at how they treat people and yep. just, just make a mental note because if they can treat a stranger a particular way, then they certainly can treat somebody that they're familiar with sure um, that way. Okay. So here's, here's one of the questions. Are they working on their shortcomings? Yeah. I mean, I think that's, I mean, that's something like, so that you talk about is anybody should have everything together, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody has that. We kind of, we kind of mentioned that before. But like somebody should be like working on like, first of all, know their shortcomings. Yeah. And then say, OK, you know, yeah, I'm working on that. You know, what I mean, I know where I'm at. I know I got some some pitfalls. You know what? I know I may, you know, I'm trying to get my career straight. Mm -hmm. You know what? I haven't had the best career path. I went from job to job. But, you know, I got a plan to kind of really figure that out and get my career on a on a on a path that's, you know what, that's beneficial for me as a man, as a family and to support the family. Is it possible for a partner to come along and help somebody find their direction? Or are you yeah, saying that somebody yeah. should have the direction together before they begin the relationship? No, that's that's the whole part of partnership and marriage. Right. I mean, you got to You find that helpmate. You know what I mean? Somebody mm -hmm. come in, can step in and help you out. Get yeah. to that next level. Yeah, I agree. I think. Sometimes we um, we want to be the finished package mm -hmm. when we get married. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't be in the prog in progress, like a work in right. progress. You shouldn't be like pursuing the best version of yourself. But I do think that there is a challenge when you say, OK, I have to be. And I think we've talked about this in a previous um in a previous podcast, but I have to be perfect before I get my spouse, because then your spouse is just a plug and play. Like here, this is where you go. Your spouse 
the end. I don't need you for anything because I got my life together. I got my money together. I got my mind together. I got my education. I got my job. I got my house. I got my car. So really, I just need you on my arm to spend time with me and somebody that I want to sleep with and somebody that I want to eat dinner with. And whenever I go out, I want to have you there as my company. And that's like, that's not, you don't really want a full, yeah, disposable spouse. Come on now, baby. That disposable spouse. You need to coin that disposable spouse. Yeah. And so they're just, they, they don't, they're not allowed to have personality and allowed to really be engaged with your life. They're just really there for your pleasure. What is that? You know, that's not a relationship. So I do think that we have to be careful in expecting our partner to be perfect, like definitely look for these red flags, but they don't have to be a finished product. Just right. like we don't have to be a right. finished product. But what you said is being honest with where we are. Hey, you know yep. what? This is where I am in my education or my finances or my goals, or this is where I'm headed. This is what I'm trying to do. Or even with that, Hey, I know that I, I want to be in the music industry. I'm not exactly sure where I fit, but I just know that this is uh, this is my this is my industry this is my calling and have some something that you're doing right. in that don't just be like it's way out there and I'm not doing anything for it I'm not really engaged in it I'm not I just know it's something I want to do then that's a hobby <laughs> you know like that's yeah. like yeah. all right put that on the back burner what are you about right now so yeah. I think really being honest with your potential partner and then being able to trust what they're saying I think that's a big that's a big deal. And, and working on those shortcomings. You've talked about this before. Working on your shortcomings. So what does that what does that look like? How can you identify if somebody is working on their shortcomings? How do you identify it? I don't know if you can actually identify. I mean, it's almost that's like an internal thing, right? Because some things you can actually visibly see. Mm-hmm. Other things like, you know what? Hey, I have a confidence problem. You can't you really can't see that. Right. It's like I'm Ooh, trying to you like can. some I'm, people you can on some people. Sometimes like it's like, OK, you know, what? I got to speak to myself different. A lot of times mm-hmm. speaking to yourself is speaking to your head different. Yeah. That's not a verbal thing that you're going to see. You're going to see that. That's all internal. But like, you know what I mean? But like, they got to understand, hey, I got a confidence problem or, you know what? I'm trying to push myself in a different, a different, different pathway. And that you got to, it's an innocent trust comes in and you got to say, okay, do I trust this person? What they're saying? Yeah. So it's really going to be, I think that's hard to see that. You got to trust them in the aspect of what they're saying doesn't match up with the direction that they're trying to go. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's looking at actions and listening to words. So I think that that's a, a pretty big deal. And yeah. I think this the last thing I want to kind of point out is the support of your dreams. Mm. Does your partner really support you with more than just verbiage, not more than just the pat on the back? Yeah. What do you yeah. think? Yeah. I think, you know what, to me, that the number, the third one that supporting the dreams is like, to me, the most important aspect of it. Of yeah. really a relationship that is. And I say it being a relationship. And it's like, it's a reason why when you get with somebody in a marriage in particular, like, okay, you have an assignment. Mm-hmm. And we may not know what that assignment is before you're married, but ultimately you have an assignment that you're trying to achieve, whether that's, you know, what to start this business or to raise these kids or to have a family, whatever that assignment is, it can be, right. it can vary in many different ways. Right. And like, does my spouse, like, are they counterproductive to that assignment? Ooh. Or are they? Are we all on one accord of supporting that assignment? Not saying they even even it may not even be their assignment, but do they support the assignment? Right, right. Like you said, if I want to be a politician, you know what I mean. Would it be productive for you to be, you know, what I mean, uh, 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 a gangster rapper? That's going. That's that. That's conflicting, right? You know what I mean. Right. That's no, con- no, I feel you. That, that's that's conflicting. I'm gonna be a politician. You might you, you and you again. You want to be a gangster rapper? I'm like, hold on. Now we we work in two different directions. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I'm not saying maybe somebody's doing that out there. If y'all know somebody that's doing that, let me know. But like, let us know. That's yeah, really interesting. I, but to me, that would be counterproductive. Right. You know what I mean? To where the relationship trying trying to go. Right. You know what I mean? You may have somebody that has a dream. You know what? Want to be an actor, an actress. Mm-hmm. Another person's like, you know what? I don't understand all that. Yeah. I don't you get it. You need a real job. Yeah, get you a real job. But yeah. it, and they like really like this. Like, man, it's kind of like, hold on, this is my dream. This is my yeah. assignment, and I want to tie this to what my to my marriage, to my relationship. And you like pushing me against it. Yeah, I think that's I think that's probably one of the biggest, at most eye opening aspects right. of this whole thing. Do they support what it is that you want to do with your life? Um, because if they if you don't have that support, it's going to be a fight every day. Because you're you're gonna either yeah. bury that thing inside of you and right. not do it because you don't want to have contention with your spouse, or you're gonna pursue it and be fighting them every day as you try to do what you believe that you were created or called to do. Right. No, hundred percent agree. I think. I mean, just to kind of close everything out. I mean, there's some other things. You know, we got the like, we got the stability, 
We got the dream, supporting the dreams. Those are three things that we kind of talked about. Some people like, well, what about, you know what, if they credit score is in the 520s? You know, somebody, okay, I, I ain't got no, you know. Or, you know what, they, talk about that they living with their mama and they ain't got this, that, and the other. That could be another thing, too. So it's not an all-inclusive list. Right, right. It's really just kind of a, a perspective that we want to bring to the table of what we kind of see some key things to kind of think about. Yeah. But I think these three can, things really can, like, almost help you frame up saying, okay, is this the right person for me if you haven't married them yet? Yeah. And, like, I guess I would say, and I want to hear what you have to say on it, Tristan, is like, okay, now if you are married and you see some, some of these traits, my, you know, my spouse ain't stable or we don't like the same things mm-hmm. or they not really support my dreams. Mm-hmm. I still think it's possible to have some discussions around those things, right? To say, okay, yeah. hold on. You know what? We haven't in the past kind of, you know, yeah. had these discussions before, but I want to start talking about this, see how we can get better on, on, on the same page. Yeah. I definitely, about being on the same page. I, I definitely agree. I think that w- if you're already married to somebody, I think these three things, all the other stuff that you just mentioned can fit inside of these three right, things. Right. Oh, they're living with their mom. Okay, are they stable? Are they working towards something? Do you trust them? Are they consistent? Mm. You know, I think everything else for, for me, in my opinion, can fit inside of these three things. But right. if you're already married to somebody and you're seeing some of this stuff on the list and you're like, ooh, uh, it's not happening there, I think you need to have real, serious, honest discussions. Mm. And I think I would recommend counseling, having somebody, an outside person, really kind of talking you through why it matters, who they are, um, making sure that you're connecting, making sure that you're really hearing each other. Um, because I think that you can't do without these three. If they don't support your dreams, you you can't do without yeah, that. If you don't like each other and like e- the things that each other likes, you can't um, do that. If you don't have stability in your relationship, um, it's bound to crumble. So, I mean, every house needs a stable foundation. Yes, indeed. So let us know your thoughts. And we just appreciate you. So thank you for joining us today. Make sure you connect with us on Facebook and Instagram. And check out our website for more content and resources, FuseMarriages.com. Let's talk about it. You're listening to Fuse with Tristan and Michael.